Hey, 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 what's up everybody? It's Uncle Mad here. Tennessee Titans game day. We're up in Buffalo to play the Buffalo Bills, but I'm not in Buffalo, I'm in Nashville. With Jesta, because Jesta said I'm not allowed to go to New York. Even though I'm an honorary New Yorker, it's ridiculous that I'm not allowed to be president of New York. But we are going to go to a Titans watch party for tonight's big game at Monday Night Football. But before we go to the watch party at Brooklyn Bowl, where we once went to a National SC watch party, we're next door at Tailgate Brewery. That's why they did it. Brewery, Tailgate. We're going to have some pizza. Just as, I did it on purpose that time. She's going to drink some beers. I'm not a drinker, so I'm not going to have any of the beers, but... Jessica's sampling a couple beers. She got a, I believe they call us a flight where you have two beers at the same time. It's crazy, but that's what she's doing. Hers tastes like coconut. I don't know what the other one she's drinking is, but it's out of control. It's ridiculous. We might need these. She might need these drinks tonight because things aren't looking great for the Titans so far this season. And the Bills looked really good last week, so we'll see what happens. All right, you know I'm not a drinker, but I've got this cookies and cream flavored beer here, and I like cookies and cream, so I'll try it for the sake of content. It really does taste like cookies and cream. It's good. It's not bad at all. I wouldn't drink a whole one though if I was a drinker. I mean, it's a little thick, so depends on the type of beer you're out for. It might go good with like, it might, uh, dessert beer? Do people drink beer with dessert? I don't know, I'm not a drinker, but that might be a beer worth drinking with dessert. All right, here's what we're working with pizza-wise. This is the what now? The whipped ricotta pizza? Um, it's their like, they have a ricotta uh, monthly pizza, and this is their monthly one. It's the time of the month for the ricotta pizza. So it's like pepperoni sausage, ricotta, a few other things on there. It looks good, it looks appetizing. We were supposed to get a spicy feta dip, but they dropped it on the floor, they said, so it's coming soon. Oh, apple teas. Ah. Uh, really good. Good choice, Justin. I picked out a good pizza for us here. You didn't pick it out. Jessica wanted to see what barbecue chicken or Hawaiian pizza, like simpletons. I got. I was like, let's go fancy. Let's get like the special pizza. Always thinking. All right, feta dip is recovered and is here. We got this before. We know it's good. Ooh. Very good. Well done. Bread spot on. I killed it with this order. I can I, read a menu like... I picked out everything on this menu. Moses reading the Ten Commandments. I don't know if that's a saying, but if it is, it is now. All right, in line now for the main event. Let's see how this goes. That's Justin. DJ Rio is spinning the hits and we are in. I got us a sick table here. Jessica did it. I'm not gonna even take credit for this one. She ran in and like sat down and plopped down and took credit for this. So good spot. I'm surprised there's not more tables down here. Like, all right. So it is notable. We do have a game day menu this time, as opposed to Nashville SC match where they kind of gave us the runaround about how to get food. They've got hummus, French fries, tater tots, smoked wings. That sounds really good. Chocolate frosted cupcakes. Those might be coming up later sliders, burgers, and pork. So last time we were here for National SC, we could not get food unless we were at the bowling lanes. This time, there is a menu available. So good to know. But we already ate pizza. We do have a merch set up here, although nothing new or interesting that I'd want to grab today. So, but it's good to have this stuff available if anybody wants anything. Tonight is going to be something epic, okay? Tonight we're gonna be testing the energy all night and we're gonna be sending it over to the stadium, okay? Y'all give it up for my man's on the one to two, DJ Rio, give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Fierce trivia battle going down right now. 120. High or Let's say lower. 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 The answer is 88. Wow. That's a very low number for our highest tackler last year. My guy got a Jeff Simmons signed jersey. What a prize. I should enter this contest. 
Now listen, tonight we have the amazing task. Everybody get your phones out. Okay. Now when I say this, I need you to scream it back to me with crazy energy, only if you believe it. Okay? Alright. Now, when I say who run it, you scream what? Okay, all right, so you already know this, you've been here before. Okay, let's do it. Who run it? We, we run, run it. it! Who run it? We run it! Who run it? We run it! Who run it? We run it! We make a whole bunch of crazy noise today! Yeah! yeah. Tonight, will we get... I'm free! Trevor, you guys. Trevor, you guys. Trevor, you guys. Trevor, you guys. That's a line now, much more physical than it's ever been. Oh, I forgot Roger Saffold plays with him now. Fresh set it out from the Bills. 45, digs in motion there. To the ground. Get him, get him. All right. Javon Curse is buying us all Bud Light. Hey! 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 Alright, so it is the next day after the Titans got completely humiliated on national TV against the Buffalo Bills. Um, if you don't want to hear me rant about the Titans and what I think's wrong with them, this is probably a good time for you to end the video. But subscribe to the channel and turn the bell on for notifications before you go. And thank you for watching. I will say the event over at Brooklyn Bowl was a lot of fun. It was uh, cool to see that they changed some things up from when we were there for Nashville SC, a little bit more interactivity. They did the games, they had the food available this time, which was nice. So good event. Hope the Titans and Nashville SC as well continue to put on things like that for the fans. Uh, Cause they're gonna need to take care of the fans over the next couple weeks. Cause it's gonna be a rough stretch for Titans fans, but Good event. Thanks for checking that part of the video out. Now, rant begins now. To talk about what's wrong with the Titans right now, you have to kind of go top down, look at the problems all the way across the organization. And I haven't criticized him much in the past, but I think you have to start looking at John Robinson. You know, he got off to a really good start here in his tenure with the Titans, built some really, really good teams, brought in some really good players, but the last two to three years it's started to not really go his way there's draft classes that have been complete washes you know free agent signings trades that just were bust and didn't work out and the big problem that was a glaring issue last night was the mess of an offensive line he's left us with at this point in time you know probably you know I hate the thought that maybe Luan has suffered a, another ACL as an ACL victim myself. I'm always sympathetic to that, but probably should have cut bait and got rid of him at some point in the last year or two when he's clearly past his sell by date, it appears. You know, let him go off and podcast in peace because having his huge, huge contract tying up so much money has probably hindered a little bit of what they're able to do on the offensive line. Sticking with him over Saffold, probably not the best idea. Saffold looked like a beast last night, running over our defensive line. Shut up, animals. Obviously, the draft issues where he's had not much success trying to draft new offensive linemen hasn't helped, but not being able to go and find anything that can help us in free agency is obviously troublesome. So the offensive line is not going to get us very far. You can see what's happening to the Bengals. You can see what's happening a little bit to the Rams. 
good teams collapse if they don't have a great offensive line. Good quarterbacks struggle when they have a bad offensive line. And, you know, Tannehill's not on the same level as Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, so putting him behind a crap offensive line is just asking for trouble. And that's where John Robinson's put us right now. And say cap hindrances, whatever you want. The salary cap's fake. It's not real. I mean, look at what the Bucks did. Look at what the Saints have done. The Saints have been in salary cap trouble for like 15 years and just keep signing players, keep rebuilding somehow. The cap's not real. General managers can figure out ways around it and to fix things. If he had wanted to keep Rad Roger Saffold, he could have kept Roger Saff Saffold. I think that was more the cap's an excuse to cut bait with players you don't think can do it anymore. You know, maybe coming off the injuries with his age, they just were ready to move on from Saffold. Probably shouldn't have, looking at what we've got now. Speaking of the cap not being real, not being an issue, the other John Robinson thing that's starting to become more and more of a really, I mean, at the time, you know, as a Titans fan, he probably knew it was a bad idea, but you wanted to try to justify it. You wanted to try to talk yourself into it. This is the A.J. Brown trade. And I can only think now at this point that that was 100% John Robinson trying to flex his ego. Uh, he told, you know, A.J. what they were going to offer him on A.J. and his people balked at it. And John Robinson decided to flex his ego, show who the boss was, traded A.J. out of town. And now we've got no deep threat. We've got nobody who can stretch the field. So teams are able to stack the box, run right through our terrible offensive line, hit Derrick Henry for losses. He's getting hit three yards behind the line in scrimmage on every single play pretty much. And, you know, for whatever signs of promise Traylon Burke shows he's not been able to be the big threat stretching the field that we had in A.J. Brown and just looks more and more like that was a disaster of a trade and just another in a long line of mistakes that John Robinson has made recently so then you move on to the coaching staff I mean that was it's just getting impossible to watch our offense anymore with Todd Downey and you can see flashes of what I assume is you know Tim Kelly's mingling particularly in the early parts of games when we're in the scripted plays there was one play to Burks that was really well drawn up where basically all the other receivers kind of cleared out up the field to open a little drag across the middle for Burks to be wide open and that's the kind of stuff we haven't done in the past that we're starting to see little glimpses of of running plays that are designed to get players open as opposed to just having them run and hope for the best seeing that more in the scripted part of this early parts of games those first 20 or so plays and then it kind of Todd Downing takes over and just ruins everything and I think Todd what I realized last night during the game was Todd Downing's biggest problem isn't necessarily that he's like an idiot or calls bad plays he does call bad plays but I think it's I think he's trying to outsmart the defense too much I think he's trying to be too too cute he's trying to be too clever there was like a third down last night where we ran out uh it was about a, it was in that kind of range where you could maybe run you could maybe pass you could go either way so he runs out a personnel package that would indicate to the defense that we're probably going to run the ball. It was two tight ends, fullback, Derrick Henry, Traylon Burks is the one wide receiver. So you look at that, that's probably going to be a, a jumbo-esque package, you know, only one wide receiver on the field, two tight ends, a blocking back. You're probably going to run the ball, right? Oh, <laughs> thought Downing's too smart for that. We go empty backfield and take all those players and line them up out wide so to catch the defense off guard because they thought we were going to run the ball. But the problem is, even though we may have slightly caught the defense off guard by that personnel grouping, that personnel grouping left us with three players who essentially aren't good receivers on a play where now we're going to throw the ball. Derrick Henry, uh, Troy Carter, Jeff Swain. You can make an argument that Burks isn't there yet. Hooper we started to see some of, but I mean, even that, it's like, is he the player you want on the field in a crucial third down situation? Or would you rather have more actual receivers out there like Robert Woods, who started to flash and look like he can actually do something for us? It's these little things that, those are, the, I think, what drives me crazy, and that's what Todd Downey's biggest issue is. I think he's constantly trying to outsmart the defense with little odd formations and changing up what the personnel group that it's on the field is, as opposed to just saying, what's a play that's going to work? What's a play that can get us this first down here? Let's call that play, maybe. And, I mean, it's crazy to think. It was 17-7 at halftime. The defense did everything they could in the first half to keep us in the game, give us chances, and the offense just couldn't do anything at all. And we come out in the second half, and this is where Vrabel and Shane Bowen have to take some accountability. The Bills figured things out. We did not. The Bills realized we were not throwing any extra help, any extra protection on coverage on digs, which we, I mean, with their number two receiver out, how do you not throw extra coverage on top of digs? How do you keep him in man-to-man, one-on-one matchups? Just stupid. And then even when he started beating us, we kept doing that and didn't adjust. 
And suddenly, next thing you know, it's like 41-7, to seven, everybody's benching their starters. It's like out of nowhere in the third quarter. Like, I even looked up and was like, oh, my God, this is the third quarter? How did this happen? It's insane. It was just malpractice by the GM to stick us with this offensive line that we have, to make the A.J. Brown trade without having a real plan of how to put a playmaker, another weapon into the offense. Coaching just fell apart last night. Offense through the first half still is an issue. Defense and Vrabel just got – made to look fools of in the second half when they couldn't figure out how to stop the one player on the field that kept killing us. A lot of people got to look in the mirror today and figure out what they got to do to get better because halftime, 70 to seven, we're in the game. We've got a chance. We make the right moves coaching wise. The game goes completely different, but we don't and everything falls apart and it's a blowout. Players have to take some accountability as well. Tannehill, one interception was just terrible, but he's just trying to make a play. But it's the typical Tannehill throwing to triple coverage for no reason to, like, Westbrook at Kenne again. The other interception was tipped. Not really his fault, but, I mean, just it's the same crap I said at the end of last year. The receivers just aren't open. We're not doing enough to get the receivers open. So he's constantly having to throw under pressure now with the offensive line being terrible to receivers who aren't open. And that's going to be a bad formula. You want to bench him and go to Malik Willis? Look what Malik Willis did when he came in. Fumbled, looked like crap, couldn't throw the ball at all, couldn't find open receivers, was constantly getting smashed. You want to put a rookie quarterback behind the offensive line we've got out there right now? Look at David Carr, what that did to him in Houston. Don't do that. Just let Tannehill take the brunt of the pain and make the mistakes and get us through the games as he can. But until we do something, like whether it's schematically, whether it's finding a free agent, whether it's making a trade, something – that offensive line is going to be a problem. I mean, Henry's never going to get going if he's constantly getting hit three yards behind the line of scrimmage. I, I mean, I honestly don't know what John Robinson was thinking fielding that offensive line. I mean, coaches and players and stuff, they're really like, they love to talk about how like stupid the media is, how stupid fans are, that they don't really know what's going on in practice. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But I think anybody who's anybody who's talked anything about the Titans said all off season long, they needed to address the offensive line and do something with the offensive line, but we're all stupid. We're all idiots. We don't know anything. We don't know what's going on in the practices. We don't see what's going on behind closed doors, and we don't understand how hard those guys are working. But yet here we are. We all saw it on the field last night. The offensive line is trash, as we all knew it was, even, but we're stupid. We're stupid. We don't know anything. You know, Fans don't know anything about the game. <laughs> it sucked. It freaking sucked, and now we've got the Vegas Raiders coming into town this Sunday. They're also 0-2 and, and have been struggling a little bit, so they're going to be trying to figure some things out. They're going to be trying to turn the corner, but, I mean, I don't like that offensive line having to block Max Crosby. That's not going to be fun. I don't like our defense trying to stop Devontae Adams, trying to stop Darren Waller, trying to stop Josh Jacobs. I don't like anything about this game. And then what's next? I think it's, like, the Colts, who – what season did we do everything? Like, I can't wait to get to the Colts game because that might be the matchup we need to get things right. But we're staring down the barrel of being 0-4 when we go into that bye week. I definitely see that as being where we're probably headed towards right now. So a lot of people over at, uh, what is it now, Baptist Sports Park, St. Thomas Sports Park, Ascend Sports Park, Ascension. I don't know what it is anymore. A lot of people at the Titans practice facility in the next couple days need to start uh, looking in the mirror and start stop sweeping things under the rug, stop just ignoring problems that even us stupid fans can clearly see and fix it. Because, I mean, we're going on 18, 19, 20 games of Todd Downing's anemic offense that has no creativity, and even when it is the creativity, it's the overthinking stupid stuff like the personnel all weird setup on third down that led to nothing. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. It's, this is where, you know, had this nice window of opportunity, built a pretty good roster, and now just kind of they rested on their laurels too much, were too confident in themselves, got their ego a little bit too high. Thought. Look at all the success we've had. Look at all what we've done. I can do – I feel like I'm talking about John Robinson once again. I feel like they, he got a little ego on him right there and thought, I can trade away A.J. Brown. I drafted A.J. Brown. I found him in the second round. I'll trade him around. Boy, I can get somebody better. Didn't work out that way. We can let Roger Saffold go. He's old, broken down. I'll draft a new guy that will take it over. Nah. 
We got Dylan Redunds who can't get on the field. We got Marco Jones hurt first game. Taylor Juan hurt again as always. Just ego and thinking you know better than everybody else sometimes is the ultimate kryptonite to success. So got to look in the mirror over there and start thinking long and hard about the decisions they've made and the decisions they're going to make going forward. So we'll see what happens. The good news, if there is any good news for the Titans, is that the AFC South is so terrible that, like, 7-10 and 10 might win the division. But right now, I don't think we can get to seven wins. I don't see on our schedule where those seven wins would come because Jacksonville looks pretty good. As bad as Indy is, they're going to, you know, probably get right. They'll figure some stuff out, I think. Houston has not been terrible in their games. They've been competitive, so look in our division as crappy as it is. It's been better than what we've been. Play the AFC West. That's not going to get any easier. We've got the Packers coming up on the schedule. It's just a brutal, brutal, brutal schedule. Washington, who's looked all right. Philadelphia, who looks lights out like they're the best team in the NFL. I thought they were going to be really overrated. I thought they were everybody's little sleeper team, but they're proving me wrong. I'm sure A.J. Brown's going to be really happy to play in that game. It's going to be a long season.